Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a man named Harlan de Grote, who is in his car in a park, watching a movie. He is accompanied by his girlfriend, who keeps teasing him. Harlan loses his temper, and slams her face against the dashboard of the car. A man hears the woman crying, and approaches to control the situation. The man then defends Harlan's girlfriend, and a scuffle ensues, in which Harlan violently beats him. Elsewhere, Russell Bays works in a steel mill in Pennsylvania. On his way home from work, Russell notices the car of his younger brother Rodney, parked outside the racetrack. He approaches him, getting out of the car. It turns out that Rodney had recently lost a bet on horse racing. When Russell learns of this, he asks his brother where he got the money to bet. Rodney admits that he borrowed money from a lone shark named John, who runs an illegal bar. Russell is evidently upset by his actions, however, because he is the only brother, he does not scold him excessively. The next day, Russell visits his ailing father, who is being cared for by his uncle, Red Bays. Russell also meets Rodney, who turns out to be a military man about to be sent to Iraq. After visiting his father, Russell goes to see John, the moneylender who had lent his brother the money. When he is about to enter John's room, he discovers that the latter has a threatening guest, Harlan. Harlan is angered when Russell enters without permission. Russell gives John his monthly salary, to pay off his brother's debt. He agrees to pay the rest when he receives his next paycheck. In addition, he begs John not to tell Rodney about this. Afterwards, he has a drink at John's bar before going home. That evening, he returns home inebriated, and the streets appear desolate. A car unexpectedly comes down from above and stops crosswise. He tries to brake, but it is too late. Unfortunately, inside the hit car are a woman and her child. After getting out of the car and checking the condition of the passengers, Russell is shocked to find that they are both dead. He is imprisoned for eight years because of this accident. While his girlfriend Lena Taylor never visits him in prison, his brother Rodney visits him regularly. Rodney declares that he is leaving soon for Iraq, and may not see him for a long time. A few months later, Rodney finally returns after completing his military service in Iraq. He informs his brother that their long sick father has recently died, and Russell is shocked by the news. A few years later, Russell is finally released from prison. Rodney picks him up on the day of his release. The first place he goes after being released, is to the graves of his father and mother. He then plans to visit his ex, Lena. Thus, he finds out why his lover had never seen him in prison, Lena already had a boyfriend, Wesley Barnes, a police chief. After a while, he gets his old job in a Pennsylvania steel mill, while Rodney participates in an illegal fight. Rodney's opponent appears to be quite strong. He is hit several times when he falls to the ground. However, things change when his opponent insults his mother. He gets out of control, and severely beats his opponent, winning the fight. It turns out that his participation in this illegal fight was to pay off accumulated obligations to John. John becomes enraged after Rodney's victory, because he had bet that he would lose. Later, John tells him that he is unfit to fight, because of his inability to handle his emotions. John advises him to follow in his brother's footsteps, and work in the metal industry. Nevertheless, Rodney, with a beaten face, ignores John's advice. Meanwhile, Russell, who had stayed home to wait for Rodney, is taken aback when he sees his condition. However, he does not ask him too many questions. Rodney goes directly to his room and hesitates to speak. The next day, while cleaning up the leftover breakfast, Russell discovers the hand bandages in the trash. He immediately approaches Rodney, and advises him to stop participating in illegal fights. He invites him to join him in a metal foundry. The income might not be as high as that of a fighter, but at least he could use it to survive. Hearing this, Rodney becomes enraged, and says he has lost interest in living. He shows the scars he received while fighting in Iraq, saying that serving his country ended only with sadness, because he saw numerous war victims die before his eyes. Nevertheless, this has not paid off, because he is not leading a dignified life. Rodney visits John at his tavern. He begs to join him in the struggle to repay his debts. John initially hesitates to sign Rodney up, because the stakes are high and the organizers of the fight are notoriously dishonest. However, when Rodney insists, he eventually agrees to his request. Later, John contacts Harlan, the man who organized the fight, and asks that Rodney be included in the upcoming illegal fight. Russell is spotted meeting with Lena at another location. He begs her to get back together with him. However, because of her relationship with Wesley, Lena rejects him, especially now that she is pregnant. Finally, the two embrace each other, crying. Later, he visits the site of the accident in which he collided with the car, in which the woman and child were. 
he lays a wreath to express his condolences to the victims. The next day, he pays a visit to his uncle, who invites him to go hunting in the forest. Despite his exhaustion, he accepts the invitation. In the meantime, Rodney is with John on his way to meet Harlan, who underestimates Rodney's fighting abilities, because of his height and appearance. Hearing Harlan's remarks, Rodney becomes enraged, and challenges him to demonstrate his fighting skills. Fortunately, John manages to settle the matter. Later, John summons Rodney. He asks Rodney to surrender in the next fight, because that is what he and Harlan agreed upon. Rodney remains silent, because he is still angry with Harlan. He has not yet decided whether to surrender or not. On the day of the fight, Rodney immediately starts acting aggressively. His fierce anger allows him to attack effectively, and crush his opponent. When John notices this, he yells at him that he must lose the fight. Rodney finally listens to him, and when he is attacked, he does not fight back. However, his opponent continues to beat him up, even though he has clearly won, forcing John to step in to save Rodney. After the fight, Harlan approaches John, and informs him that his business is finished, because Harlan won the bet money in Rodney's fight. Finally, the two return home, and John is happy that he no longer has to deal with Harlan. Unfortunately, his prediction is wrong, because the car is intercepted by Harlan and his men. Harlan approaches his car, which has stopped near the end of the bridge. When he notices Harlan, his cell phone accidentally falls under the car seat, and he connects the number to the answering machine. Through the car window, Harlan approaches John, saying he is not done, and shoots him. Harlan sends his men to drag Rodney to a warehouse. Russell, back from hunting, enters Rodney's room that night, and discovers a letter. Rodney apologizes to Russell in the letter, for not taking his advice to change jobs, and admits that this would be his final fight. He has promised to work in the metal industry after this meeting. Meanwhile, Harlan's men are torturing Rodney. When Harlan enters the barn, he asks Rodney to look at his face. Rodney, however, insults him by calling him a coward. He becomes inevitably enraged, and immediately shoots him. He orders his men to bury Rodney's body in the middle of the forest. Wesley visits Russell the following day. Initially, Russell thinks that he has come to his house because of his previous relationship with Lena. However, his prediction is wrong, because he is here to inform him of Rodney's death. Later, at the police station, Russell is presented with a voice recording made before John's death. It turns out that the seconds before John's death had been unintentionally recorded in his bartender's voicemail. The police however have difficulty locating Rodney. Although the police have investigated the people at the scene of the accident, all have remained silent. Russell becomes enraged when he learns of this. He even accuses Wesley and the police of being inept in handling Rodney's disappearance. Russell and his uncle then return to John's office, to ask for Harlan's address. Russell meets a bartender in John's office, who says he does not know Harlan's address, but knows where the fights are taking place. During his investigation, Russell discovers that John owes Harlan a considerable amount of money, which will be settled through a fight. He and his uncle rush to the address given by the bartender. He goes to a parking lot later that evening, and pretends to buy stuff from Harlan's men. At first, they hesitate to serve Russell, because they believe he is an undercover cop, but eventually they take him to Harlan's headquarters. He cannot find Harlan, because there are many people in the area. A local policeman stops Russell while he is driving with his uncle. Wesley gives this policeman directions to get Harlan out of there as soon as possible. The policeman points out that these people are known to take justice into their own hands, and are hostile to people from other areas. The policeman orders him to drive away. If he disobeys, he is going to be arrested. At this point, Russell and his uncle are forced to return home. A few days later, Wesley waits for him at the factory exit after work. He claims that the authorities have found Rodney's body, buried in the bushes. Russell tries to keep calm, but in reality he is devastated. That evening, Wesley and Lena visit Russell's home, to express their condolences. Lena asks Russell not to investigate Rodney's death alone, and to turn the case over to the police. Russell tries to live a normal life for several months. Despite learning that authorities have raided Harlan's house, his position remains unclear. After months of waiting, he decides to take matters into his own hands. He breaks into John's office to learn more about Harlan. He finds Harlan's phone number, and calls him immediately. He summons Harlan to the bar, and promises to pay John's remaining debts. Harlan arrives at the pub that evening, escorted by one of his men. He enters from the back street, carrying a heavy bag. Russell, who had been loitering, approaches the pub's entrance with a gun. Harlan threatens and interrogates the bartender inside, demanding information about the individual who contacted him. Not getting any information, Harlan shoots the bartender. 
Russell eliminates Harlan's henchman in another room, and prepares to kill him. Harlan however starts shooting, prompting Russell to seek cover. Unfortunately, when Harlan tries to escape, the car fails to start, due to sabotage. He is forced to flee the car, and take refuge in an abandoned factory. Russell pursues him, and the two collide. Russell shoots Harlan in the leg, but he still manages to stand. He then orders him to accompany him on a walk in the woods. Wesley comes from a distance, and begs Russell not to kill him. Russell, however, ignores the warning. When he notices Harlan walking away, he shoots him in the back and kills him. Next, Russell is still in his house. He is not imprisoned, because Wesley defended him, and arranged for him to be acquitted. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.